My name is Sarah Woodbury. I'm here today with my husband Dan to talk about Schwellen app Your Worth. Schwellen app Your Worth isn't the title of the video. It's Schwellen Vaur. Vaur means great. So Schwellen the Great. It was not a title that was used in his lifetime. But it's what we call him now. Schwellen was born at Dolwethedlin Castle in Snowdonia sometime after 1172. His father was Jorworth, the eldest legitimate son of Owain Gwyneth. But Schwellen was born into a time of conflict when all of the sons of Owain were fighting for the throne of Gwyneth. His own father, Jorworth, was killed in 1174, leaving David and Hrodri to split the rule of Gwyneth between them. We talked about that a little bit in prior weeks. There's no mention of what happens to Llewellyn as an infant after his father dies. His mother was Merved, the daughter of the king of Powys, and so it's possible she took him home to Powys to raise him. The next mention of him is in 1188, when Gerald of Wales, who I like to think of as one of the first travel writers, discusses his victories in Gwyneth. The church was concerned about the succession to the throne of Gwyneth because they viewed David and Hrodri as illegitimate rulers. The Welsh law that allows illegitimate sons to inherit equally with legitimate ones was an anathema to the church. David and Hrodri were the sons of Christina, Owain's second wife, but Owain and Christina were first cousins. The church thus viewed their marriage as incestuous and didn't want David and Frodri ruling. Llewellyn, on the other hand, was the eldest legitimate son of the eldest legitimate son of Owain Gwyneth. So this is what Gerald has to say. Although David, having married the sister of King Henry II, by whom he had one son, was powerfully supported by the English, yet within a few years, the legitimate son, destitute of lands or money, by the aid of divine vengeance, bravely expelled from North Wales those who were born in public incest, though supported by their own wealth and by that of others, leaving them nothing but what the liberality of his own mind and the counsel of good men from pity suggested, a proof that adulterous and incestuous persons are displeasing to God. Llewellyn's victory wasn't complete until 1197, when he captured and imprisoned Davith. By 1200, he was ruling all of North Wales, all the way to Mould Castle, only five miles west of the Dee. In 1205, he married Joan, the illegitimate daughter of King John of England. And at that point, he was recognized by England as the Prince of Wales. All was not smooth after that with England. In 1210, he was forced to submit to John and surrender his eldest son, Griffith, as a hostage. Griffith was illegitimate, which will become important later. In 1215, however, King John signed the Magna Carta, one of the provisions of which was to release Griffith back to his father. After King John's death, Swellen was less concerned about expanding his control of Wales, because really he controlled all of it, but a few small portions in the south. What became his focus was ensuring that his son David succeeded peacefully to the throne of Wales. That meant that his son Griffith, who was his eldest son, but illegitimate, would not get to become Prince of Wales. Griffith was unhappy about this. In order to control Griffith, Llewellyn actually imprisoned him, as did Davith after Llewellyn died in 1240. Griffith himself died in 1244, and then Davith in 1246, leaving a power vacuum for leadership in not only Gwyneth, but all of Wales. That role was ably filled eventually by Llewellynep Griffith, Llewellyn's grandson, who I will talk a lot about in later videos. Next week, we're gonna talk about Crickieth Castle, which was one of the many stone castles Llewellyn Vaur built during his reign. If you like this video, click on the playlist or subscribe to my channel. There'll be a new video next week. And if you wanna check out my books, click on the link to my webpage.